Are you a videographer doing marketing or a marketer doing video? If you're a plain old videographer focusing on equipment, sitting there wondering why you're not getting business, let this podcast be a huge wake-up call. Uh-oh. We're on a mission on a to mission. rid the world of bad video. Bye-bye. This is the DV Show. Parkinson Range. Bad video sucks. Welcome to this edition of the DV Show Podcast. My name is Brian. So let's get right down to the point of this podcast. No one really cares about gear anymore, at least not the way they used to. The industry used to be a buzz about new releases or camera upgrades, but not anymore. We're starting to get back to what really matters, what's always mattered, the content of the video. Not just the style and the technique. Owning expensive equipment doesn't make you a good video producer any more than owning expensive guitar equipment making you a good musician. If you're not a hybrid video marketing agency, you're becoming extinct. You're becoming a dinosaur in today's market. The value today is how you apply video to your market. It's not about the equipment. It's about how you make the video. Today's guest, Jim Fox from One Market Media, is with us to get into this topic. Jim, thanks for coming on the DV Show. Wouldn't you agree that things have changed in the video world? And as a video professional, we shouldn't become a dinosaur. We shouldn't become extinct simply by not adapting to what's going on in the market? Yeah, yeah. it's changed a huge amount. It, it, it just has the... It's gone through the same metamorphosis change that all um, all companies go through w- 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 when they're hit by technology. Um, you know, the, the everything's being commoditized now. Um, the, the means of production have been have been uh, uh, commoditized. You know, if if you start with software, it's free. I mean, f- for fifty dollars a month. You get all the Adobe glory that you need. You mm-hmm. know, every single brilliant piece of Adobe software for 50 bucks a month. You know, I would argue that's free. If you can't afford $50 a month, you shouldn't be in the industry. Right. You, know, you, right. you know, it almost goes without saying. So what's left? Cameras? Those, you know, back, back in the glory days, those were tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now you can, you can get fully kitted out for... Mm you know, four or five, six grand. Mm. That's the capital investment. That's it. So, so the, the means of production have been, you know, have been given to the masses. And that's the single biggest effect in the whole industry. There also used to be this, this notion that you had to be a, um, you know, you, you, had, you had to slave for, for, for decades and learn the nuances and subtleties of video slowly working your, your way up in some <laughs> apprenticeship mode. It's true. That's true. That's bullocks. You don't need that. You don't. You know, my uh, I wrote in a in a article years ago on one of my posts. You know, my my you know years ago, my daughter learned editing in grade nine, and she's really good <laughs> at it. You know, and and that and that Love of course it. got all sorts of hate, hateful responses from you know veterans in the industry, yeah. but. Sorry, that's that's how it's going. So mm-hmm. you know the, the the magic of owning equipment, and you know being a, a an equipment owner, it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay, so what's left? You know, and so that's that's to me that's the next phase. It's not, you know, it's not having equipment. You know, it's not calling someone up and saying, "Hi, I'm Bob. Um, I do video. Do you want some?" Because. <laughs> That, but that you know, honestly, that's what people used to do. Hey, um, I do video. Do, do, do you need some video? And that that used to move the dial. People would say, Oh yeah. yeah, 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 I need video. Good luck with that now. You know, video is no different than than any other media. It's just a, it's just a media that, yeah. that you you yeah. There are you know there are people obviously always will be who are really good shooters and they're really good editors and there's a lot of creative people, but. Um, especially ad agencies, I'm seeing that more than anyone. And and people like like me, my background's marketing, and for no good reason. In 2008, um, coincidentally, the day that the market took a turd, you know, the big crash in 2008, October yes. 1st. That's when I started One Market Media. Wow, the wor- worst timing ever. Um, you know, so you, you you can imagine the phone calls I had. Oh yeah. You know, you know hi, uh, I'm Jim. I click. 
<laughs> you know, I do, I do video click. Uh, I do marketing video <laughs> click. It was brutal. And yet somehow I... You, you had know, to do it, right? I mean, well, you had to. Yeah. And, but, you know, so two, two things. One is it was a drag, but, I, you know, I, I, I sort of fought through it. But two, honestly, when I started... No, my background is in marketing. That's sort of the value I brought. I knew nothing about video. I had never, you know, I I literally never never picked up a camera before, you know, other than a still camera. I didn't know anything about editing, and I just thought, oh, what the heck, uh, old dog, n- new tricks. Let's try it. And <laughs> it took me a while. A lot of, you know, I made every mistake you can, but mm-hmm. you know, if if an old guy like me can can pick it up and, and do a decent job of it, and you, you can go to one market media and be the judge of that. You know, um, it's it, it's not it's not rocket science anymore. So, but where my where I think the reason I succeeded was I wasn't a, a video guy doing marketing, which most guys used to be. I was a marketer doing video. Who happened to be doing video, mm. and it, it's nuanced, but I think it's true. I mean, you know, I think that's the difference, and I think that's where the industry is going. Hmm. That um, you have to add value beyond, you know, being a camera operator. There are still at the high end, you know, if you're doing high end commercials and stuff, for sure, you, you need a great DOP. You know, you, you need a crew and all that great stuff. But work your way down one level really quickly. Uh, you know, I, I'm seeing ad agencies, you know, the creative directors and whoever else, you know, bringing video guys on board and learning themselves and, you know, becoming directors. And they're, they're pretty good at it. If you're creative, mm-hmm. if, you're imag- if you have an imagination, y- you can learn it. So that's the, that's the big change I, I'm seeing in the industry. Ah, okay. So I, I went to your website and I'm going to play during this interview, uh, Jim, I'm going to play devil's advocate, like the bitter videographer who did, uh, who, who needs to call people up and, and present themselves as a, as a videographer who, who does uh, business. So during the interview, I'm going to play this devil's advocate and really be uh, bitter in a way <laughs> and come across. Hit, hit me. Be, be, ang- be angry. All right. I, 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 I've heard it all. So go so, for it. All right. So, so like I said, coming back to the video industry, it's totally different. And, you know, uh, myself, I used to make um, – I used to make a lot of money uh, with app developers. I used to show up at meetings and you know for for app, uh, Apple developers and uh, app developers in general. I used to do video for them, and that was a big chunk of change for me. And uh, I worked really hard to do that. And I went out there and uh, you know did what I needed to do, and my my business was successful. So I come back and um, back to the to the industry today, back into the market. And it's totally, totally, totally different. You don't need fancy equipment. The cool effects. You know, budgets, you don't have to be creative anymore. I mean, it's all about, and like you said, it's all about, and I'm reading this right off of your site, which is have two great articles, which I read. Um, it basically, just yeah, just two. Well, I've read your whole site. I love your site. It's onemarketmedia.com. I recommend my listeners to go ahead, and we're going to put a, the link in the show notes to it. Uh, this are article, two articles in general The Future of Video Production, Chaos, Specialization, and Real Reality. And uh, you say today, basically, and I'm not being confrontational with you, but I'm just saying that you say something very, very truthful here. And it says that uh, effective video production is more about delivering measurable business results. And that's what it's all about today. Uh, and that's where it is everywhere. YouTube, Facebook, uh, everywhere. It's, it's marketing. <laughs> okay, so th- th- there's, there, there's a great point, uh, point of discussion. I think for a while... Um, during the you know 2006 to 2010, um, it wasn't about uh, delivering marketing results. It was about um, technology and, and technique, and I, I do mention that in the article yes. because you had you had um, you know before that you had professionals all the same equipment doing doing good stuff, and 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 they did what they did, and it was by and large it was expensive, but it was about marketing. But then all of a sudden, with the advent of guys like uh, uh, Philip Bloom, who yes. sort of led the whole uh, uh, DSLR craze, yes. and what I, I, I glommed on to, I, I bought a you know $10,000 Sony EX1, and then nice. about six months later thought, no, I, I, you know, I, I'd rented a, a, a DSLR and much preferred the look of that. It was more cinematic. You know, so all of a sudden, it, you know, everyone can create these beautiful, stylish, shallow depths of field, you know, effects. And, and for a while, it was about that, you know, because everyone wanted to know what Bloom was doing, what new new style, what new <laughs> new, new technique, you know, how you, how you did color grading, you know, and, and, and what cool aerial shots. It had nothing to do with marketing. 
nothing. No. It was all style and technique. You know, and so that's where we were for a while. And all the old guard got a little pissed off because they were um, uh, they were upset about um, kids with cameras. You know, and it was affecting their you know yes. their old old school trades and skills. And I, and I get that. And everyone, you know, but it still took commitment and money to, to, to do, to master all these techniques, you know, so fast forward, you know, three or four years past that. Okay. Well, everyone's done it. You know, you, you, you don't need more shallow depth of field. That's, That's not right. going to do anything. So, so now what? And then it, I think it, it sort of fell back to where it always was. And it was about marketing, That's you know, right. video, Video is, you know, it's no different than than uh, graphic design for, ad, you know, print ads or audio design for um, radio ads. You know, it's just a tool, it's just a technique. At the end of the day, you know, if you're doing it on a corporate, and, and I'm I'm talking about corporate video. Um, so my background's not uh, not uh, entertainment. It's it's corporate. So corporate, on the corporate okay. side, yep. the only thing that ever mattered. Was was can can you move the dial? The ROI, so, basically, right? The ROI. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so that's that's where it's fallen to. And, and so now, what's also interesting is um, there's a big new disruptor. And I, I honestly don't remember if if I mentioned this or emphasized this in in the article, but. Uh, s- social networks now are driving huge change. Um, you know, mass mass marketing um, is being uh, replaced by individual marketing. Uh, s- sales scripts um, are being replaced by dialogues, and so y- you've got. And then um, it, I, I guess I alluded to, alluded to that in the in, yes. in the uh, real reality. And what I meant was my unclever pun was that not virtual reality, but what's going to what's going to matter more is um, seeing real things. So the the context around that is is all marketing really is the is the is faking things. I mean, it's horrible to say, but really that's what marketing is. It's I an mean, illusion. If, yeah, if you watch. It's, it's positioning, which, yes. you know, if you want to be, you know, quite um, put a point on it, that's that's faking things. It's making your company look like something it may not be. That's right. You know, and, and that's really what marketing has been doing forever is to persuade, to convince people that, you know, that your product's bigger, faster, better, whatever. You know, it may be true. And and it may not, but it's that's what it's that's what the purpose of marketing has been. Uh, marketing experts will say, "Oh, you know, hogwash. It's, it's something more." But really, <laughs> no, that's, that's what, what it is. That's the gist of it. Yeah, that's what you're trying to do. But what's happening now is because of, uh, of social media, um, it's getting harder and harder to hide behind fake things. People are seeing through it, and so real is more important. Uh, mm. Review sites. Um, while painful, are hugely important, you know, hugely influential. You know, people posting, you know, I, I, I reference, reference this point, you know, um, if, if you, you know, you used, to, you used to complain to your neighbor about a bad customer experience. Now you, now today, you put a bad customer experience on, on a review site and that hurts. Tomorrow or, or mm-hmm. slash today, you're going to record that bad customer experience and then God help you if you're a brand because you can't hide anymore. You can't put a commercial that says our our our, 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 our toothpaste is 32% whiter and, 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 and move the dial if you've got a, a video of someone uh, trying the toothpaste and, <laughs> and, and vomiting or, you know, whatever. It's probably a bad example, but, um, you know, if, if, if you have these bad customer experiences, um, you're going to see them. And, and that's, you know, social market. So people expect and need and want more real now. And so th- that means less polished, hmm. you know, and that's, I think, the other big, um, big change on the marketing side is, you know, you, it used to be sort of faux real, you know, where, you know, even, even testimonials, and I've, had a, I've done a couple of blog posts on testimonials, they're all fake. Yes. They all are. You know, it's just a question of where on the continuum That's right. you, you, you're comfortable. You know, I, I, you I, can buy I, them I, on I, Fiverr, by the way. I don't know if you know about well, that. I know, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, you can. And, you know, I, I've had, had this argument with, with PR people, but they're, they're, they're either 1% fake or 100% fake. That's right. Because, you, know, you know, the one thing you don't do, you know, uh, testimonial 101 is you, you don't go randomly to someone's house 
turn the camera on, ask some questions. Because A, you might be surprised horrendously <laughs> by what they say. And, 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 and B, they're probably not going to be the right people. They're not going to be articulate. They're not gonna, it's just not going to feel right. So even if you, you always choreograph a testimonial, you, you, you set up the time for the interview, you, you, you tell them the questions, which is the smart thing to do, what you're going to say. You, you'll re-ask if you don't quite like what you hear. So that, you know, that's a hint of fake. You know, so um, all of that is getting harder and harder, and real is what matters, and real has to feel real. And so shooting something on your iPhone and posting it might have just as much effect now as as getting James Cameron to mm. direct your, your 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 commercial. That's right. So so where does that leave where does that leave us as video professionals in this world of reality and cell phone video? Where I mean where you do this full time, where are you making your money? Where wh- how are you doing this? So um you, you okay, so that's probably the best question um to ask and it, it, there's a huge number of answers, but my simple response to any anyone would be, you have to evolve with industry. Thank and you. that means adding value. Yes. Learning to add new value to what you do. So I don't think it's enough. And, and, and this is going to sound crash, crass, but if you're an average video guy, average skills, like you, no one wants to think of themselves as average, right? No. You know, if, if you ask a, um, a room full of people, you know, rate yourself on the, uh, um, how attractive you are. The average rating is going to be 7.6. It is. <laughs> that's, true. that's how it is. That's, that's, that's how that's we reality. Yourself. That's reality. I so agree. W- when you ask yourself, um, how good are you as a videographer? You're going to say, you're, you're going to think, well, I'm at least a seven, probably trending to an eight. You know, the reality is we're all average. Right. That's just, that's life. So if you're the average videographer, um, and all you're doing is video, it's going to get tougher and tougher. That's how it is. And, the, and if you want to keep doing video, you have, you have to add new value. So for me, honestly, it was easier because I'm a marketing guy first. So mm. everyone I work with, um, I, 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 do, I do marketing with them. Um, or I've been asked to do marketing with them. Um, and, uh, you know, so to advise on other things. And I add... You know, so I yeah, I remember on, on on a couple blog posts I read. You know, people complaining about this, saying, "Well, you know, I don't I don't do that stuff. I I, I leave that for the ad agency or I leave that for the company. Mm-hmm. You know, I just do video. Well, good luck with that mm-hmm. because you know if you don't add that value, then you know someone else is going to. And and the someone else honestly are the marketing companies and the ad agencies who. Oh, and by the way, at the high end, they're the ones who own the client relationship. That's right. And that's everything. That's right. You know, so if they own the client relationship, they'll keep using videographers until they figure out video, and then they'll take it in-house. It's, it's the right thing to do. Right. They control it. It makes, it makes the creative directors happy. It's cheaper. They earn more money. Um, that's where it's all going to go. So, you know, that's sort of high-end agency roles. But even, even marketing, uh, s- smaller companies, social media companies, uh, marketing consulting companies, they're all starting to do video. They're hooking up w- with video guys. But if they can, you know, buy a cheap DSLR and, and do it themselves and just, you know, record an interview, they will. It, it makes sense. Mm. And it, even in-house, too, and that's, that's the other thing. Um, I lost, I've lost a bunch of uh, uh, video work to larger companies, um, and I've, hel- I've helped them lose <laughs> my work. Huh. I help them set up their in-house studios. And, you know, you, you, you can do one of two things. If, if, if you, if you see, it, see these things coming, you can either um, tilt at windmills and, 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 and complain and scream and, and ignore it, or you can, <laughs> you can accept it and help people. So if anyone said, you know, can you help? I, I, look, sorry, Jim, but we want to take some of this in-house. The only, my only response is absolutely. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll help awesome. you get that going. That's awesome. You know, and and either it either it, it, you lose work, you know, and quite frankly, the work you lose is stuff I, I really don't want to do. Like just sort of um, uh, point and shoot um, interviews, things like that, where there's no creativity, no value added. That's right. I don't want to do that stuff anyway. That's right. And 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 when they're in a pickle and they and they need a good you know corporate video done or you know something interesting that they know they can't do in-house, then they'll call you still. Awesome. And, and that's, that's so, I think that's how you, you have to evolve. You, you've got to either learn new skills, which is, I, I admit, is difficult, or at a minimum, 
team up with people who have complementary skills, and, and typically that's marketers, ad agencies, uh, marketing consultants, you know, social media companies, companies like that who who do things um, with the same clients you have, um, and you know, maybe joining forces, merging companies, you know, working out relationships. That'd be my recommendation. Awesome, adaptive is basically what you're saying. Jim, thanks for coming on the show. I appreciate it. And uh, thanks for your knowledge. Thanks for your website. And again, we'll put links to your information uh, in the show notes of this podcast. Happy to chat, Brian. Well, that does it for another edition of the DB Show podcast. Thanks for listening and subscribing. If you have not visited our website this week at thedvshow.com, take a look and always keep in touch with us. We have a weekly newsletter that goes out. You can get social with us on Twitter, Facebook, and of course, Instagram. We're also on YouTube where you can find most of our videos. So until our next podcast, we will talk to you next time. For additional tips, tutorials, and to get your video questions answered, visit thedvshow.com. Stay on the cutting edge with The DV Show. Video production just got easier. The DV Show. Serious about creating better video? You're in the right place. Subscribe to our free online coaching service and expand your learning beyond our popular podcast.